Matthew, in your new movie, The Lincoln Lawyer, you play a Mexican man. It's nice, bro. No, in Lincoln Lawyer, I play a high-profile attorney who works out of my at Lincoln Continental. <laughs> Which, yeah, pretty much makes me a, a Mexican. Churro. Hell yeah. Churro. Homie, orale. Solo sigue viviendo. Onto the scene and days to confuse. He's been a movie star. His new thriller, The Lincoln Lawyer, is in theaters now. Everybody give a all right, all right, all right, Matthew McConaughey. On screen. Well, is, is it? All right, all right, all right. I love it. See if we can get another all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> Very nice. How great is that? Yeah, baby. I'm all right, all right, all right. Very nice. Look at that. Check this out. That's hot. My, uh, my brother is married to a uh, Mexican woman. Yeah. All right? He's one of the happiest guys I've ever met, right? <laughs> he, uh, they got a son named Miller. And Miller, Miller, Miller looks 100% gringo. 100% gringo. <laughs> so everyone goes, you know, I know you're, uh, you, they say you're, your mom's Mexican, but we don't believe it. You look 100% gringo. And so my uh, brother gets his son this T-shirt and puts it on him and sends him to school. That's and, badass. <laughs> <laughs> And he says, I promise you, that's for you. Oh, man. That's for you. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Check this out now. I didn't know some of this, but check this out. I'm talking about the difference between Mexican, Latinos, Spanish. There it is. Yeah. All right. There is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. My man, hey, Matthew McConaughey bringing some knowledge over here. <laughs> School. So, man, we got these uh, t shirts at Los Arcos in San Antonio, Texas. Los Arcos. And uh, they'll be on, I think, your website and our website. Oh, really? well, they, everybody them. go get one. They'll be out. Yeah. I love you, too. What else? Hey, what else? Oh, we got a few <laughs> other things just to keep this real legitimate. <laughs> Let's have a big red. Oh, big red. Salud. Salud. Mm. And just in case, you know, we, we forget as the time goes by, let's make sure we know. Here's some chiclets. Oh! <laughs> 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 I think my God, they brought me some chiclets. Oh, yeah, live. baby. You don't have a little ceramic uh, Mickey Mouse piggy bank back there, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so... Uh, have, are the McConaughey boys attracted to exotic women? Evidently. Yes. Yeah. My, uh, my brother's married to a Mexican girl, Erica. Uh, my, my lady's Brazilian. So, so we're, we're pretty consistent at going south of the border. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? You don't have to go south. We'll come over to you. <laughs> We're out here in Texas, and they're in Texas, so we came a little bit north. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was born in a, in a town called Uvalde. Um, as I like to say, mi primero días en este mundo fue en la ciudad de Uvalde. Es 82 porcentaje de So, it's a, una hora, una hora y media norte de la border de México, ¿sí? Sí. So, eh, mis hermanos mayores, todos uh, uh, amigos, amigas, mexicanas, mexicanos, ¿sí? So, me oye poco, me oye poco. And uh, that's where I learned to speak a little bit Let of Spanish. Let me tell you something, right? man. But you see, you, you, you see the strength in the unity of this country. 
not in the division of it, in the unity, in, in, oh, in yeah. Miller, in, in your, in your yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, my brother says he's trying to water down the Mexican race because y'all <laughs> are about to be the majority. Yeah, no, I think, uh, um, you know, coming from Texas, and Texas is about to be the majority yes. Mexican. Yeah. California's Close. on its way there, too. There's two dudes we got to find. There's two. There's two. You know? Yeah, man. I mean, look, I've traveled all over the world, and, I've, and, I, and I come from a diverse place in Texas. I've been here. I, I, I love people and cultures. Yeah. And you speaking Spanish, let me tell you something. If I wasn't high, I could have sworn I was. <laughs> Seeing Matthew McConaughey talk Spanish, I'm a... yeah. All right, so when you were growing up, in a very Latino place, was there also different uh, other people of color? Were there African American people? In yeah, well, in Uvalde it was 82% Mexican, but then we moved to Longview up in Northeast Texas, which was had a large black community. And uh, same way as in in Uvalde, I mean, I tried to venture off and to <laughs> and to meet them, and I had a lot of black friends as well. Yeah. Um, you know, there was there was times where I probably went to places that <laughs> wouldn't have been recommended. <laughs> <laughs> and pulled off some, pulled off uh, some, some, some cultural exchanges at late nights in what, the What hour. do you mean? Like what? What restaurants or? Oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call this place a restaurant. <laughs> me and a buddy, me and my buddy Rob Bindler, um, had out one night. And again, just curious and, and high school kids, and we're about 17 years old. And we head over to the east side of town in Longview, which was 99.9, well, 100% black, right? <laughs> we go, we, we'd heard about this place from some of our buddies in school, our black friends, about it called the Paradise Club. The Paradise was boarded up Sunday through Friday, right? <laughs> But Saturday night, the Paradise was rocking, <laughs> right? So we get over there in East, East Longview, we head up there to the, the Paradise. We show up, we get to the door, and there's two steps, and there's this big black guy who's a bouncer there. And he's like, man, what the f y'all doing here? <laughs> He said, we would come in and check out y'all's place, man. And there was a sign that said cover, you know, two bucks. And, and, and he said, come on in. I said, we need to pay the cover. He goes, no, because you're the only white mother that ever done a thing like this. <laughs> so we go in. We go in, right? Cultural exchange, right? We go to the bar, get our malt liquor, man. We're sitting there. We got this older guy about 75 next to us who takes his pull off this malt liquor. Bam! Hits the ground. Well, I get up. Like, I want to help this guy up. And as soon as I do, I get bumped out of the way. And two of these big black bouncers grab this guy and just... <laughs> out the door. So we're like, okay, we're in a serious place. <laughs> they threw out one of the locals like that. Well, we hang out, have a few drinks. Um, go dance with some of the ladies of the night who were working for the man who was honestly in the, in the, you know, the leather, you know, the, uh, purple, uh, oh, yeah, cap the with the feather the in feather, it? Yeah. Th this, this cap was in this place. <laughs> All right? And you know the terry cloth tops? Oh. That's what they were wearing. So All we got right. one jukebox, and we're dancing, and we're just, you know, getting along with everybody. And we stay there for a few hours, and the place closes, and, uh, we get outside, and we'd made a few friends. We're outside in the parking lot. We're talking with them and everything. And all of a sudden, from across this gravel parking lot, here comes these 12 black fellows, man. <laughs> and they're moving kind of fast and kind of aggressive. Well, word did everything got out that those two white mother <laughs> were over here in the, in the Paradise Club, right? <laughs> they come up, and they, uh, they horseshoe me and my buddy against this fence. Now, the couple we were talking to just drifted off real quick. <laughs> all right? So... They, they, they horseshoe us up against the fence, and I'm in my mind going, oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm with my buddy, Bendler, who doesn't weigh a buck 25 soaking wet, all right? And they come in, they horseshoe us against the fence, and the leader was about five foot five, the shortest of all of them, and he steps forward and he goes, what the f y'all doing on the side of town, <laughs> I said, no, we just came over. He goes, no, I don't want to hear nothing about it, man. You look just like the white mother that jumped my little brother. I went, no, 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 no. And he goes, no, you do look just like the white mother <laughs> jumped my little brother. Sixteen white mother <laughs> jumped my little brother. My heart rate starts beating. I'm going, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> my buddy who's lit, right, the buck 25 guy who, <laughs> he's lit. He goes, sixteen? How do you have time to count? <laughs> right? And at this moment, at this moment, I see the leader's eyes. And the leader who's up there like this goes, it locked him up. He goes, and as soon as he looked around, like, that's a good <laughs> I grabbed my buddy, man, and we just blew through him Red Rover style, man. Take off hauling ass. Now, check this out. So we're running down the road, man. 
And we had a buddy named Clay who wouldn't come in, was scared to come in, so he parked the Jeep about, uh, uh, I don't know, about 500 yards down the road. And we're running, and we're yelling, Clay! Clay! We see this head pop up at the back of the Jeep, and it's Clay. He starts up the Jeep, backs it up down the road, and then starts taking off slowly to our running speed, and we jumped in the oh. back of that. Somebody's like handing off a baton in the, in the, in the relays oh, in the Olympics. So... And there was 12 right behind oh. us. We were like, whoo! Anyway, we were, some of our friends had heard about it at school, uh, heard about it who lived over yeah. there, so we got back to school. They were actually more amazed that we, we decided to actually go on that side of town than, than, <laughs> than we were. But we got on out of there, and it was a good cultural exchange. <laughs> More Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. So growing up, you, you, did you play football? No, I ended up playing golf. My dad walked down the hallway. We all played football. Started to. My dad walked down the hallway, um, and you could hear him coming. <laughs> and one day. We were saying, Dad, we want to play football. He goes, are you sure? And he brought that up. He goes, how do you know I'm coming to your room before I get there? I go, we can hear you. He goes, what do you hear? And I'm like, well, you hear all these bones popping. He goes, yeah, it's that, my back, my knee, everything. So he said, why don't you take up golf, man? You can play that till you go down. Yes. It's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you feel better yeah. when you play, right? Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hole-in-ones? Quattro. You had four hole-in-ones? I had four hole-in-ones. Four. Check this out. That's great. There's pros that don't have any. There's I know. pros that don't have four. No, I, I piss a lot of people off when I say <laughs> I got four. The first two were 11 days apart. So, so that first one I got, it, it, it was called Alpine. Uh, it was a public course where our high school team played. Yeah. I get the first one. And the group that's with me says he got the hole in one. And so the, the club's just sitting there making the trophy. Yeah, hey, congratulations, Matthew. How you doing? Well, 11 days later, and they hadn't finished the trophy yet. I come in with the new group, and they say, we got another one, right? And it was on a different hole, and they're like, oh, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't even finished engraving on the, on, the, on the first one. And I was like, it's the truth. So I had two and 11 days apart. Then I had a, uh, a third one about a year later in a charity tournament. Yeah. Made the hole in one, was supposed to win the Suburban. Everyone saying, You got a brand new car. Turned out there's a big insurance scam. There was never a car. <laughs> and um, the dude stiffed you? Oh, he, yeah, well, he stiffed me. So anyway, they said, oh, We're going to take, we're going to hit them legally. And we all of a sudden, You know, we're not going to jack with it. Y'all, if y'all get the money for that Suburban, go ahead and give it to the charity of, of the, uh, the tournament. So we kind of <laughs> laughed it off. And then yeah. the, the fourth one was in uh, night golf in Australia. In 1989. You made a hole in one at night? At night. That glowing ball just disappeared. I thought the lights went out and we found that little glowing son of a bitch in the bottom of the hole. Crazy. That's... <laughs> hey, but, but when you make a hole in one, you have to buy everybody drinks. You got to buy them all drinks. That's the, yeah, that's the, that's the goofy part about it. You did it. You, yeah, you're a winner. Congratulations. Now buy the whole bar. And believe me, everyone comes out of the woods when they hear someone had a hole in one. Yeah. You got to buy them all drinks. I made a hole in one in Hawaii. They called the old Hawaiian lady, came with a nightgown on, no bra on. She's like, where's my drink? <laughs> yeah. I said, put a bra on, I'll get yeah. you a beer. They will come out of the hills. Yeah. yeah. So you seem the type of dude that could blend in anywhere, like, go, uh, they say, off the grid, like, just disappear. I prefer to, man. I, uh, I've scuba dived quite a bit. I've, been, I've had about over 200 dives. I've gone to Papua New Guinea. I've gone backpacking on my own in, in South America. I've backpacked on my own all through Africa. Many times I've driven my trailer. I got this great Airstream trailer. Yeah. Crisscrossed America a oh, hundred times. Man, I lived in my trailer for two and a half years. As an actor? Yeah, as an actor. Do people, do people, do people recognize you? They've got to trip out. Because I've seen trailer dudes, none of them look like you. <laughs> well, I mean, they might have looked like you thing, when they were though, young. Most of them, if you're hanging out in the trailer park, they're not the first ones hopping out to the cinema. <laughs> no. So they may no. be catching me on Netflix a year later or something like that, maybe, or TNT or, you know, whatever. What's this station? Yeah, TBS. 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 Hear that? <laughs> All right. Plug. But sometimes, man, I mean, people traveling like that are usually pretty independent anyway because that's why they're on the road. Right. So they don't really want to get in your business. And, like, the first park I went into, guy says, it's real simple. You say you got your door shut. No one's going to come around. You got your privacy. But if you want to make friends, just open up the hood of your truck. 
ever want to come over, see if they can help you fix it. And it turned out to be true. Yeah. I pulled over places like, uh, that was, I got lost somewhere up in Montana one night and uh, <laughs> pulled over after 1 a.m. in this little spot, said campground. I pulled over, there was nobody there. It was pitch black and it was me and my dog. And I'm looking around to see who do you pay, you know, for the, for the spot. And I saw this little glowing uh, orange light coming from about 30 yards away. And I went over to it, and it was the, this guy in a white chef's outfit smoking a cigarette leaning against the wall of what was his big windowless lodge. And I said, hey, man, you know who I pay for, uh, for my spot? And he goes, take it right down there and go in the door, ask for Jim behind the bar. He'll set you up with the spot for 11 bucks. I don't see anybody. There's no cars, nothing. <laughs> I open this door, and it's a freaking, I, I, what do you call it? It was, it was a, a, a hoedown freaking, they'd come out of the hills. There were Indians <laughs> dancing on the table. There were, were, were hillbillies that had come from the mountains. There was over 100 people having a throwdown inside this lodge. And I don't know where they were all parked. I don't know how they got there. You didn't see a light anywhere. So I go up and get a drink. One guy notices me. He's absolutely lit, a regular. Anyway, cut to seven hours later, man. <laughs> I was now dancing on the tables with the Indians. <laughs> we were rolling dice. Rolling dice for a new set of tires. Oh. There, were, there were women with, with more hair in their arms than I got. It was, a, it was and then all of a sudden, we, we didn't know it was light outside because they got no windows. They're bringing bacon and eggs and serving us breakfast, and, and I've got my dog in the bar, and we'd had a, a, an absolute throwdown. I love it. I yeah. love it. We'll be back more with Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. So Lincoln Lawyer, Lincoln Lawyer, I was telling you, good actors, good movie, man. Congratulations. I appreciate it, man. We, yeah, we scored on this. You know what? When people hear the title, because it was from a book, I thought it was like a dude from the old time that, that was a lawyer. It ain't Abraham. <laughs> now, I, I'm a defense attorney. I work out of the, the, the back seat of my 1988 Lincoln Continental. Yeah. Cruising around yeah. the underbelly of L.A., um, you know, looking and helping out clients who can't really help themselves. The underdogs, like I get to play in this movie, is who yeah. I'm helping out. It's nice, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And good actors. Great actors, man. Marissa Tomei, Ryan Phillippe, uh, Josh Lucas, uh, William H. Macy, um, Michael Pena, John Leguizamo. Yes. Uh, the great yeah. really good. On, Francis Fisher, really, really strong cast, man. Yeah, let's yeah. take a look at a clip. This is a Lincoln lawyer. Check this out, right there, Matt. He did. <laughs> Hey, so you're always you're always this temperament, man, right? You're always chilled out, right? I think every time I see you, you're always... yeah, man. I figure if, if the, when the real drama comes, <laughs> you got to handle it. So I'm not trying to create any along the way. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, Have you we got been... real stuff to deal with. Now, other than the, I mean, you've been in dangerous situations, though, right? Yeah, I've been in quite a few dangerous situations. I mean, that story I told earlier was kind of dangerous. <laughs> But I've been, I've been caught in some places um, um, when I was traveling I've, uh, with, with wild animals that, that, that I said, oh, I'm about to be part of the food chain. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Traveling through Africa one time, we walked, and I was with this, my guide, and it had rained the night before, so we're following our trail. And all of a sudden, the trail takes a right and goes across this, uh, or down under the, the, this water that had built up. And, the, and the, it was about 40 yards wide now. The thing was, about 30 yards back, we had seen about 30 floating crocodiles, right? And so now we see the path goes there, and we got to go through that same water, but those crocodiles are there. This doesn't make much sense. Maybe we want to camp on this side of the river, <laughs> right? So all of a sudden, this lady from a village comes walking by, not saying a word. She's carrying some stuff on her head and a bowl, and she just strolls right in the water, goes up to her neck, and comes out the other side. And me and my God, I'm not saying anything, and I'm not even looking at his face, and all of a sudden, he goes to follow her. I grab my backpack over my head. I go follow him, too. And we come out the other side soaking wet, and I turn around, and my buddy was a, this guide was a, was a native there. The lady had walked on, and uh, my buddy turns around to my guide, and I go, dude, that was some scary shit. Did you see the, the, the crocodiles? And the speed of sweat goes running down. He goes, yes, Dauda, I know. But you see, I let the lady from the village go across first. <laughs> And then I, 
The Lincoln Lawyer is in theaters now. Wonderful. Matthew McConaughey. We'll be right back with the man who inspired the movie, The Fighter, Mickey Ward, Matt McConaughey.